What's up guys and welcome back. We have a lot of new Switch 2 information to cover in this video so if you're excited about the Switch 2 and enjoy this, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel since we'll have more interesting content like this as we move forward to the reveal and release of Switch 2. And in this video today, we'll go over the confirmation by Furukawa of Switch 2's reveal timing and some of the Q&A portion and what type of console Switch 2 is and we'll go over new information not yet shared on an extremely interesting announcement with Samsung on the possible SOC type that Switch 2 will be using since the timing of Samsung's announcement was within days of Nintendo confirming Switch 2 and there are key details that we'll uncover as we examine why it's a perfect fit for Nintendo. So first up, on May 7th, Nintendo President Furukawa confirmed that the successor to the Nintendo Switch will be revealed within the next 10 months before the end of the fiscal year, which concludes on March 31st, 2025, in a message from Nintendo's business account on Twitter, basically for investors. Now, if you missed my live stream on April 27th, I actually said during the Q&A portion of that live stream that Nintendo would probably need to say something to investors about Switch 2 at their May investors meeting due to the sales decline of the Switch hardware and the fact that market saturation of Switch 1 is pretty much in full effect and at this point, investors will be getting antsy about Nintendo's future and start demanding answers about what's next to keep Nintendo not only profitable, but with keeping the profit margins up to the levels they are with the current Switch. So Furukawa did exactly that, which will keep investors happy since at the same time Nintendo has only forecasted 13.5 million Switch systems to ship this fiscal year, which is almost 2.5 times less than the Switch's peak in the fiscal year 2021 when they shipped almost 29 million Switch consoles and made the most profits from it. Also, this mimics quite a bit how Nintendo did this with Switch 1 when it was codenamed the NX in 2016 in late April or May range, they announced that the reveal of the NX would be later in the year, but for the Switch 2, they have said the reveal will take place between now and March of 2025. The big difference though that people need to remember with Switch 1 is that Nintendo had already announced the Switch, then codenamed NX back in March of 2015 or so due to the Wii U being a dead console and giving an actual release time for NX in April, May of 2016 for March 2017 was the logical step to keep the investors waiting since that was one of the worst times for Nintendo in their history for making profits. They simply had no choice but to give a release date time frame early. However, for the Switch 1, it's been their most successful console basically in their history in terms of profits and it's likely going to be their highest selling console of all time. So in this sense, Informing investors now that a reveal of Switch 2 will happen in the next 10 months might help keep some sales going for Switch 1 in the meantime since they didn't give an exact release month yet for Switch 2. However, if you take what Furukawa has said in the past about new hardware reveals, he was very clear in stating that when they announce a new console, they want to release it soon after and avoid the issues that happened in the past with consoles like the Wii to Wii U transition where they announced Wii U in mid 2011 and showed it and then it didn't release for another year and a half at the very end of 2012. So for Switch 2, either way, we will be seeing this console within 10 months from now and likely the release of it will be very soon after, probably four to six months after the reveal. So in terms of how Nintendo judges their fiscal year profits, this lines up with the rumors and reports that Nintendo was probably targeting a March 2025 release of Switch 2 and a reveal of the console will probably be sometime after summer of 2024, perhaps September or October of this year. To hit that fiscal year timing of March 2025, just like how they did with Switch 1 in March of 2017. And at this point, they obviously know that Switch 1 sales are going to keep declining, so there's no reason to not admit that Switch 2 is on the way soon, which is what they just did. Also, as a side note, Furukawa did confirm in the investor Q&A that the Switch successor will in fact be the quote-unquote next Switch meaning that it won't be a brand new concept, but it will be an evolution of the Switch concept, which lines up with the reports and rumors that this will be, in effect, the new and better Switch, basically more powerful, more features, 
likely better Joy-Cons as we've seen evidence from leaks and so forth, which in my opinion is the best move for Nintendo to follow up their best-selling home console ever with a better Switch. Most of us have stated many times that we just want a better Switch at this point so we can play new games from these bigger AAA developers that Switch 1 has either completely missed out on or has got awful ports of that barely function. So all this sounds great so far. Now we just need to see the console and of course what's powering the console, which for me personally is the very interesting part. And that leads me to the next piece of interesting information. And that is about Switch 2's SOC, the system on chip, which will contain its GPU and CPU. Now, as I've said before, there have been various rumors about what chip will be powering the Switch 2, with the most common one being the Tegra T239 SoC that Nvidia made all the way back in 2021, which was never released. Now, of course, there have been continued rumors of that chip still being the one used by Nintendo for Switch 2, but nothing has been confirmed by Nintendo, and to go along with that, the rumors have come from somewhat suspect sources with spotty track records, and when Switch 2 is released in 2025, that particular chip that has been rumored will already be four years old. So suffice to say, a lot can change during that time for any console, much less a mobile device like the Switch 2 will be. Taking all of that into consideration though, this new piece of information that I have to share does not debunk that rumored chip, the Tega T239, but it might give a strong indication on what process fabrication Nintendo partnered with Samsung could be using to get the most performance out of a chip like the T239, the actual final silicon chip being made for mass production for a mainstream new multi-million selling company console, which the Switch 2 surely will be, usually doesn't begin until that new console is confirmed by the publisher of the console, which in this case is Nintendo. Not only that, but sometimes the release of a console could be held back a little extra longer due to testing of that new chip and making sure its final performance meets expectations, and all of this takes months, if not years, to test. Now, this leads us to May 3rd, 2024 and Samsung's announcement of them tapping out a brand new unnamed mobile SOC just four days before Nintendo confirmed that Switch 2 will be announced within the next 10 months. And if you're unaware, tapping out of a chip means that they have completed the design phase of the SOC and that they are now ready for mass production. And interestingly, Samsung's press release also does not reveal what the CPU or GPU will be for this new unnamed mobile SOC. Only that it has flagship CPU and GPU architectures and an IP block for AI from their partnering company Synopsys. Now it's assumed by the article I've linked that this would be something that smartphones can use, but there is no upcoming device that was actually confirmed by Samsung, only that the new mobile SoC is unnamed, but ready for mass production. However, the big key about this SoC is that it's Samsung's first three nanometer GAA FET chip now ready to be mass produced. GAA FET stands for Gate All Around Field Effect Transistor. And this isn't just a smaller fabrication process by Samsung, no, it's a new design that they've been working on for the past three to four years. And the three nanometer GAA process will allow for better electrostatic control of a device. And these chips are made on nano sheets, which are thin alternating layers of silicon, which form the transistor channel and gate material surrounds the nanosheet channel on all sides, allowing better control of the current flow through the channel. And the electrical current of the three nanometer GAA chip can be tuned to an optimum value by varying the width of the silicon in the chip, which helps the SOC using this technology to save power, but not only saving power, but it also improves performance on top of it. Samsung is claiming that this new unnamed mobile SOC has improved clock speeds of 300 megahertz while at the same time cutting down on power usage by 10%. Now in terms of what they are basing these improvements against, it's assumed that they are comparing it in relation to four or five nanometer chip designs, which are very similar to themselves. And we've talked about Samsung using three nanometers in the past back in 2021 or so, but those are basically the testing ground chips being used for cryptocurrency. And this unnamed SOC they announced on May 3rd is actually ready for mainstream mass production for new mobile devices. And since it's heavily likely that Samsung is Nintendo's direct partner for production of Switch 2, not only for its console parts, but its SOC production, 
Seeing that Samsung announced this new unnamed mobile SoC is ready for mass production just four days before Nintendo confirmed Switch 2, the timing just might be too good to be a random coincidence in my opinion, and it's something that I had to cover here for you guys to give you a heads up that the Switch 2 SoC might also be ready for mass production. And if it's based on that NVIDIA Tegra T239 architecture, then the performance gains Nintendo could get using this fabrication process by Samsung will be far better than using eight nanometers, for example, and even better than four nanometers. Since you have to remember that Samsung has had problems over the last three years or so, if you look back in their history, in getting their own high performance Exynos chips running well in previous tests on four nanometers and three nanometers, that they were very likely looking for a buyer for their new fabrication process and if Nintendo does use Samsung's 3 nanometer GAA process, Samsung will basically be getting the breakout win in chip design and marketing all at the same time with Nintendo using their flagship design SoC for Switch 2. Now also interestingly enough, Furukawa just told investors in their Q&A that he does not feel that they will have a supply problem with Switch 2 since the chip semiconductor issues that happened during the pandemic are now over and this also lines up with Samsung's announcement that they are prepped and ready to go with their new 3 nanometer GAA getting all set as well for mass production. Now of course this is all just speculation so you have to treat it as such but when you examine the timing of the announcement next to the Switch 2 confirmation, the pre-established partnership with Samsung and Nintendo, the power consumption savings and performance improvements, the secrecy by Samsung on what the GPU and CPU makeup of this SoC will be, and the fact that they won't share what the name of the chip is even, or what device is planned to use it, there's just a lot of pieces that seem to fit together that this could be what Nintendo ends up using for Switch 2 and starts putting it into mass production later in 2024 for a release in 2025. Like I always say though, keep an open mind about this. Take a look at all the links I provided in the description and think about it for yourself and then you can come to your own conclusions. However, this is not a rumor or anything, but it is information that I do feel is very much warranted to cover due to how close to home it hits after Nintendo just confirmed the Switch 2. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching and for your support. If you enjoyed this, please hit the like button and I'll talk to you very soon in the next video. Have a great day.